All right. Um, in the modules, you'll see a sheet called Selected Problems from Quizzes on Chapters 10 and 11. So I thought I would go ahead and work through these. I may do this in a couple of videos so they stay um, small. Okay, so um, on this, this problem, this first part comes out of the chapter 10 material. So on this first problem, it says, assuming all members are eligible, but no one can hold more than one office, list and count the different ways the cub club could elect a president, secretary, and a treasurer if the president must be a man and the other two must be women. Okay. So you can kind of think through your, um, think, think through this. Let me see if this is in Word. Hold on. I like it in, in Word. So let me download it as a Word document real quick and then open it up. Okay, that's better. Okay, and let me make it larger. Let's double it if we can. Yeah. Okay, so this is another one where you could use a tree diagram. So I could take the, select the president, I guess, first, and it has to be a man, and um, that would be Anthony, Ben, or Douglas. Okay. All right. Then I need a secretary and a treasurer. And it says um, they have to be women. So that means I only have the choice of Carla or Erica. When I choose the secretary. Now, when I go on and choose the treasurer, if I've selected Carla to be the uh, secretary, then Erica has to be the treasurer, okay, and vice versa. So I can go in and get that position selected on all of these. So I have A, C, E, A, E, C. We need to talk about that. B, C, E, B, E, C, D, C, E and D, E, C. Now, here we have the same three letters in a different order. So here we need to think about whether that's a different selection or not, okay? So this one said uh, selecting a president, a secretary, and a treasurer. So that first spot is president, this is secretary, this is treasurer. So that is a different slate of officers, okay? So I would want to count both of those. I wouldn't want to cross those out just because they're the same group of letters. So that's that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six possibilities. It's this one right here. And the number of ways they could be elected would be six. Okay. All right now, let's see. These are, again, these are just different problems that I pulled off of the quizzes from chapter 10 and chapter 11. This came out of chapter 10. I'm just going to number it one. Okay. The next problem I put on here. Ooh. Has me, this is problem two, complete the statement with the correct response. How many ways are, can you arrange the letters A, B, C, and D? Okay. So you got to think about that. So you could do it thinking of a tree diagram. You have four possibilities for the first letter, but then only three for the second, only two for the third, and then one for the fourth. So you could use the fundamental counting principle, three, four times three times two times one, or you could be thinking four factorial, and all of those would be correct thinking. And so that would there would be 24 ways to arrange the letters A, B, C, and D. And we're assuming we know that A, B, C, D would be counted as well as B, A, C, D. Those would be different arrangements. So that's why you count them both. You don't divide to make this number smaller because you do want those to count as different arrangements. Okay. All right. The third question is just using your, um, you, by hand, figuring out what the value of this expression would be. So seven factorial would be seven, six, five, four, three, two, one all multiplied together. 
In the denominator, we have 5 factorial, which would be 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then this is 2 factorial, so that's times 2 times 1. So the 5 to 1 would knock out the 5 to 1 there. All right, and 2 could go into 6 three times, and we'd wind up with 21 as the answer to that. Okay. All right. Now let's look at this question. This one is kind of like the one that asked you to arrange the letters A, B, C, D, but this one says how many different arrangements of these letters could you have? So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine letters. So you can think about, well, I could use any one of those nine. I don't know if that's nine arrows, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Any one of those nine arrows I could pick have, have a, a zero or a C, I mean an O or a C or a T, et cetera. So I have nine choices for the first letter. Okay? And then I'm going to pick my second letter. And there'd be um, eight, third letter, there'd be seven, and so on. The issue is that there are some letters that are repeated. So you have to watch out about that. All right, so you're arranging all the letters. So you just count up. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine letters. So that's nine factorial. If the letters were all different, that would be the different ways you could arrange nine letters. But what you got to do is divide out the repeats. So there's two L's. So I'm going to divide by two factorial. I is repeated twice. So I'm going to divide by another two factorial. O is repeated twice. So I'm going to divide by another two factorial. Okay. So I can do it on my calculator. Just show me your thinking. Show me this right here. So I know that you're trying to do the right thing. All right, and then if we did it without a calculator, it would be 987654321, all multiplied together. You could just do 9 factorial, and then you'd be dividing that by 2 factorial three times. Okay, so that's really dividing by just 6, isn't it? So you could knock out the 6. Okay, or you could just on your calculator do the 9 factorial, but make sure if you do it in one step, that when you divide, that you do all of those two factorials, you figure those out. Okay, and if you recognize that it's just really two times two times two, you could just do nine factorial divided by eight to get your answer. And that would give you the same thing as you taking nine times eight times seven. And remember, I canceled out the six times four times three times two. And so I'm getting um, 60. 1,480. Okay, and that's the same as if you had done 9 factorial divided by 8. Should be the same, but I didn't get the same. So let me see what I did wrong. Um, oh, I know what I did wrong. It just hit me. Uh, I messed up up here when I said knock out the 6. 2 times 2 times 2 would be 8. So don't knock out the 6. Knock out the 8. So if I did 9 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2, that would give me what I should have gotten, which is 45,360. And that would be the same as what I would have gotten if I did the 9 factorial divided by the 8. Okay? All right, now problem number 5 is um, the problem on the quiz that had you look at the counting numbers that are being formed using only these digits and determine the number of different possibilities for two digit numbers. So that would make a good, that would be a good one to use a product table on. So I'm going to put them in order. One, two, three, five, six, seven, and eight. And one, two, three, five, six, seven, and eight. And it says, the number of different possibilities. So there I just wanted you to think about how, um, like, if I tried to come up with the numbers, it would be 11, then 12, then 13, then 15, and so on. And when I come here and I use the 2 and the 1 to get 21, 21 and 12 are different. Order matters. So really, if I just need how many, I don't need what they actually are, I can just think about how there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Okay, by 7. Okay, so there'd be 49 
numbers. I don't actually have to write out all the possibilities. I just have to think it through. Okay. I have seven choices for the first number and I have seven choices for the second number because I'm allowed to have those repeats in there. Okay. All right. Now problem number six asks how many ways can a president and vice president be chosen from a committee of seven people? All right. So you see that ordering idea. So that means that the order matters. So it's a permutation. You have seven to choose from and you're picking a president and a vice president. So you're picking two out of that. So you just do that seven, choose seven, and then find the NPR button and put in the, the two after that. And you wind up with 42, okay, 42 ways. Right. But then on number seven, it says to win at lotto, you have to, pick eight numbers from a collection of 47, but that the order does not matter. Order does not matter. Okay, so this right here tells you it's a C. You have 47 numbers to choose from and you need to pick eight. So you use that feature of your calculator and you get a ton. Three, one, four, four, five, seven, four, nine, five. Okay, so 314,457,495. So if you think you're going to play lotto and win, you have a, and you only do choose one group of eight numbers, you have a one out of 314,457,495 chance. Okay, this wasn't a probability, this was just how many different selections are there, and that would be the answer. All right, now I'm going to stop the video. And then I'll pick back up and, and do another one that deals with the chapter 11 material. So this way came from chapter 10 material. This way comes from chapter 11. The difference is when you start talking probability or odds, then you're actually in the chapter 11 material.